put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. If the video is too long for you, I have recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. Star Wars Dark Forces video game review. You take on the role of Kyle Katarn and you gradually uncover the Dark Trooper project, not to be confused with the Dark Project of Thief, which is constructing these battle droids and creating these power armor suits for regular stormtroopers and giving them these jetpacks and with that I suppose you can guess what some of the boss fights in this one are going to be and the well while well, the very first mission has you stealing the Death Star plans you know for Leia for episode 4 the rest of it is dedicated to this plot just describe. I don't quite know why they did the very first one. It feels like it might have been left over from a version where it was following the movies more, but yeah. The game opens with a text crawl. It does also early on have voiceover, which doesn't really fit, but yeah, on the whole, very Star Wars. Now, you and your partner Jan are both very snarky. She's her more so than him and they they've met before the game and he used to work as a soldier for the Empire so he knows about their you know their methods and such and they're both mercenaries for the rebel alliance and she's the pilot she flies you to and from the various mission locations and in fact often at the very start of a mission you can see her fly off in engine and then at the end of the mission you know you go to where she'll pick you up which is often the same place she'll drop you off and she again will fly into view so yeah very cool now I suppose that yeah and, and Kyle has a real Han Solo thing going on and you may just have to save Jan, which does still leave one game in the Jedi Knight series where you as Kyle do not have to save Jan or worse. That would be Jedi Academy, where Jan doesn't appear and Kyle is not a playable character. Well, she's a dame and you're a fella. At least it isn't like, you know, Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast where the whole thing is essentially a revenge story with Jan as the focus, as the, you know, source of who you're trying to avenge. Now, the you will fight stormtroopers, officers of various ranks, you know, the brown uniform, the black uniform, and you know, I believe there are some TIE pilots, TIE fighter pilots as well. And you fight 20 types of enemies. There's even the mouse bot, you know, that little thing that, you know, kind of squeaks. And it, it is basically the size of a mouse. And I swear, at least some of the time, it leads you to bonus pickups and, you know, leading you to where you need to go in the level. I kept looking for digital cheese to repay it with. Now... There's also that three-eyed orange thermal detonator throwing alien. And then there are the less... The, the enemies that make a little less sense that you fight. There are scout droids, think, you know, at the start of episode 5. The, the practice droid, you know, where Luke is blindfolded with the saber interrogation droids which again you know episode four 
yeah i i feel like they put those in just because we already know them it doesn't make that much sense to be fighting them as a you know, each of those has a specific purpose you wouldn't expect them to just be somewhere you know ready to fight off intruders there's even the one-eyed snake get your mind out of the gutter Actually, no, get your mind into the gutter. It, it lives in waste. It's the one from the trash compactor. That one does sometimes make sense, being in this. There are these ceiling turrets, and you have the, you know, episode six is the, the basically bipedal pigs with, with axes. And basically, you almost only fight empire, you know, forces so you know where Jedi Knights 1 and 2 you know you'll face off against low lives the, the kind you might meet at the cantina you know Jedi 1 you have these scavengers from you know around this abandoned living complex and such now the levels and everything else sound and feel, look, sound and feel like Star Wars. Now it does sometimes get a little fan service -y with the places you go, the people you meet or see, and the events. It is not all organic. But yeah, other than that, and the fact that it's not a horror game, it does play somewhat like Doom or Quake, you know, one and two for both. Now, it, there's at least one level where it says you have to go stealthy. I worry that it would be the barely fitting stealth from Jedi 2. It's not really stealth. You, you go through the level the same basic way you do with the rest. Now, this is not a mere Doom clone. There are features in this that aren't common to its, you know, contemporaries such as multiple floors, the abilities to duck, jump, and swim, although swimming only you know at the top of the, the water, not underneath. And you can look up and down as well. And though that is indeed with the keyboard, you know, you have a key for looking up and a key for looking down. It's not yet the mouse you do have to get used to that, but once you do, it feels organic. It's it's genuinely comfortable to use. The there are some bonus pickups, including super shield, super weapon charge, you know, full health, extra lives. At first, I thought the extra lives were pointless, kind of how they've always seemed in Doom and Wolfenstein, where, you know, in those, you can save any time you want. At least, I've never played a version where you couldn't save, and I did play it back when these came out first, you know, back when they first came out, you know, in the early 90s. Yeah, in that, you know, you just, you save at the level you've gotten to, and then, you know, why would you continue if you die? You lose all the weapons, and yeah. And in this, you can't save during the levels. So that, again, you know, sets it apart from these others. When, if you die, when you die, you will respawn near where you died, and you will have the same basic stats as when you died. You know, you don't really lose guns or ammo. So yeah, it's just, it's another chance. And this will often be like, if you died on a boss, or you you know fell too far, something went wrong along those lines. Yeah, you you get another chance at that, and that still doesn't mean you know that challenges you more than if it was you know saving during the levels because then you can do it as many times as you want. And yeah, here it only saves at the end of any level. Now, if you are crushed, it will tear through your shields at first. You don't die. You know, it doesn't go for your health before your shields. 
Now there are three difficulty settings, and you pick, you know, between them before any level. So, yeah, you know, if you, yeah, you can always set it up or down depending, and it's challenging even on easiest difficulty setting, the way it should be, and. You know, the level selector will even show you the highest difficulty you completed any level. You know, each of them individually. And the level selector is there when you start up the game or if you abort a mission. Now. And yeah, the game gets very challenging, sometimes frustrating. Now, one issue is that the controls are, you know, kind of slippery. They just, they, they make the mandatory for the time jump puzzles harder than they have to be. And, yeah, I had kind of wished that it would be, you know, again, I played this today, so it's, you know, things were changed. The default controls were changed to a more, you know, to something we're more used to today. And yeah, there still are these problems with the controls, sadly. Now, this features flowing rivers, many, many buttons, you know, elevators, you know, opening, you know, moving a platform or the like and yeah well a platform more more like a you know a full yeah never mind moving things and there are you know there are mazes within the levels some of the levels are pretty much mazes you go to a lot of secret bases now the level selector also uses a profile system, which is again not common for the you know the the game's contemporaries. Now I suppose now you you go into this with a blaster pistol and along the way you will find stormtrooper rifles those you'll get early lots of stormtroopers and you know there are various other guns some of them were kind of like some machine guns some of them were assault rifles there may be one or two that have a function similar to a shotgun you know proximity mines grenade launcher, you know, some really cool guns in this. And as you said, the proximity mines, you can also set just with a fuse. But the proximity mines themselves, the ones you've set are still going to be detonate by you. So watch out and keep them, you know, keep an eye out for any proximity mines that have already been set because, yeah, these things are really dangerous to you. Now, you do also have it, it you know there's a total of 10 weapons and not all but several of them have alternate fire i guess it might be about maybe half a third or half and if you blow up an enemy or hit them with your fists they kind of fly up into the air it's really cool actually your your fists are too powerful in this it you know it's, you know, this, this kind of crazy powerful melee really works in something like Doom, where, yeah, it is, you know, over the top, and, hey, sometimes in that, it's a chainsaw. Here, it's just your fists, and the rest of the game, the guns feel as powerful as they should, the, as powerful as they, you know, seem to be in the Star Wars movies. You know, firing several times at an enemy kind of stun locks him, and you'll be, you know, circle strafing, you know, duck and jump to avoid and, and such. And this does, this of course, has a thermal detonator, which you can throw 
either with a short fuse or you can throw it so it explodes on contact. The alternate fire is really, really useful. And uh, I love how, you know, in the movies, at one point, we see someone threaten using a thermal detonator. And depending on the game you take it on, this threat is either insane or just kind of cool. Like, in in the Jedi Knight series, they're essentially a typical real-life hand grenade. You know, in, in Battlefront, it's you know, small to medium explosion. In the Episode 1 licensed game, it's a freaking small nuke. Now you have some equipment as well. There's a headlamp, which is really useful. You know, it and in infrared goggles, which are really useful in dark rooms. And there will be dark rooms. You have these ice cleats, which provide traction on ice, and this air mask, which is good against like toxic atmospheres and such. Actually, those last two you almost didn't need in the game. Like, the, the light sources, really useful. Last two mentioned, eh, there's not that many areas where they where they really come in handy. The, there is an ice plant, though. Now, these are, you know, these use batteries separate from the ammo, and those and the ammo you'll really want to save up because you are going to need them. In fact, that goes for the shield and health as well. You know, never, never. <laughs> don't get too full of yourself, kid. Now, at any point during the mission, you can look up the mission objectives. You know, the the briefing you got, which is always in text. The I believe always in text, and the floor by floor map which fills out as you go and in fact the map you can have as an overlay as well really useful for as before mentioned the aforementioned mazes that some of these levels yeah now the the graphics and sound are good for the time and really immerse you in the atmosphere and this has John Williams music, but MIDI versions, so yeah. Now, but well, yeah, of, of his Star Wars, Star Wars music. And there might be some new music here as well that just sounds like it fits. Now, they built the engine for this from scratch. And there are, you know, fully 3D objects. There's fog, haze, shading, animated textures where, you know, ships will come and go in, you know, this docking, you know, place and, you know, machines have running parts. And this has animated cutscenes, you know, not for all the missions, but, you know, every so often there will be one of these and they will further the story and they will you know the, the characters in there look like people and though the you know the movement is fairly limited you know they're not just static either you know they will like raise a hand to point at something or look slightly off to the side things like that and you know there are multiple angles and excuse me, cuts and the like. Now... The levels are very memorable and varied. You know, there's the interior of the Star Destroyer, Java's space yacht, Coruscant where you have to infiltrate a computer vault, you know, at one point you have to free a spy who is about to be executed. You know, really cool stuff. And 
you will blow up some imperial facilities and secret bases. So, yeah, may you know that really has you feel like you know you the the levels tend to have you either do that you know do that and or finding more clues as to what exactly is going on with the Dark Trooper project. So. Yeah, you really feel like you're making a difference. You know, you're you're uncovering what's really going on, and you're helping cripple the, you know, the the development of these. Now, and some of the levels are really big, like you know, Jedi Knight, big, and. All games have a sewer level, and this one gets it out of the way early. It's like mission three or something. Now, at the end of a level, you're asked to press escape to complete the mission. So, you know, even when you walked to where you finished the mission. So, if there's an area, you know, an, an area or two, you know, a gun or two, something, something to go check out, pick up. You can do that. Now, since you go to a lot of secret bases, it's funny to hear stormtroopers and officers say, you're not authorized to be here, you know, as if you were in a basically public area and you happen to, you know, wander off and get yourself into a secured area or something, you know. It, it makes a lot more sense when they're saying, you know, die, rebel, you know, rebel scum, these kinds of things. Now, the game is only nine hours. You know, the, the difficulties and the, the various secret areas, some of which you have to, you know, blow up to access, you know, blow up the wall to access and such, do give some, you know, replayability. And when you look up your objectives and such, it will tell you a percentage of how many secrets you have found. But, yeah, on the whole, it is a tad short. I've reviewed other parts of this franchise. The links are in the description box. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.